I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're gonna use our imagination literally. The yarn phase we're gonna dye today is Knit Picks Imagination Yarn. Imagination is a two-ply non-superwash yarn that is fingering weight. It is 50% merino wool, 25% superfine alpaca, 25% nylon, and the yarn is to ply and very, very fluffy. It's reminiscent in many ways to Knit Picks palette. It has enough grip to it that I think it could do really well for color work applications. Although I'm not sure if the halo would be a little bit too fuzzy, I don't think I'm knit with this myself. So I'd have to think more about the halo of it. Before we talk more about our project, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Cindy Fry. Cindy, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And now let's get back to the yarn. But anyway, today I want to dye this and create a layered tonal. And my goal is to go for a deepish purple color. Now, when I'm playing around with our dye recipes today, I'm drawing on some previous projects. Specifically, uh, I'm drawing on the triad color mixing exercise I did with Dharma's primary colors, Brilliant Yellow, Caribbean Blue, and Deep Magenta. And I picked the purple that is a one-to-one -one ratio of the blue and the pink. And then I'm also drawing a little bit from the time I mixed a pre-mixed purple with true black and looking along the ratios of one-to-one -one with those colors. Now, the color we get today is not going to be exactly the one that I showed from the black and the purple, but we're going to be in that realm of color. I added on removable nylon zip ties to the three skeins and then pre-soaked them in some plain tap water for a couple of hours to try to make sure that it would be as well saturated as possible. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications and do all those other YouTube things. But now let's go look at our stock solutions that I've already mixed up from a past video and start measuring out our dyes. Right here in the least effective way possible to store stock solutions, I have 1% stock solutions of Dharma's True Black, Dharma Caribbean Blue, and Dharma Deep Magenta. The reason why this is the least effective way to store a stock solution is that you get liquid around like the edges of these containers and it's just really, really messy. But they're still 1% stocks, we can still mix them up and we can still create a really beautiful color here today. So to create our layered purple, I measured out 150 milliliters of the true black dye and then 75 milliliters of each the Caribbean blue and deep magenta. I kept the colors that I measured out separate, and so I did rinse the graduated cylinders I used with some water, and then added that to the dyes that I had measured out, so that way I could use the rest of that dye uh, for our project today. While these types of containers are not great for stock solutions, as I've already mentioned, they are wonderful for mixing up dyes that you're gonna be using that day because they are wide and therefore are stable and hard to tip over. And so that's why I'm using them right now again. All right, I am going to briefly, I'm gonna briefly remove the 300 grams of imagination from the dye bath where we pre-soaked the yarn and set it here. There might be dye on the countertop. I'm not gonna worry about it. And we're gonna start with our pink. There's no acid in here yet, but I'm gonna go rinse out this container. Okay, and so we're gonna get, I would say likely, the most even coverage on our pink layer because we're starting cold and with no acid but we all know that Caribbean blue does spread out a ton. And so once we do that layer, uh, <laughs> we might get uneven coverage there as well. And, ooh, I am seeing some dry spots maybe on the yarn. Oh, interesting. Interesting, okay. 
Now, colors are going to take a little bit longer to strike as well, which is going to soften the layer. So comparing this Imagination colorway to a superwash yarn that we're dyeing in a very similar way, four, five, six, I'm expecting we're going to see slightly less variation uh, because it is non-superwash. So I added six tablespoons, of course, mid-thought, because that's what I do. And I did not measure the amount of water that went in here again. Um, and so we might be adding more liquid as we go to do the blue. I think that that's the color that we will do next. But now I am going to take this over to the stove and heat it. And we're going to heat it not necessarily until all of the color has absorbed, but we're going to heat it until most of the color has absorbed. Because if there's a little bit of pink left, we can go ahead and do the blue. If there's a little bit of blue left, we can go ahead and layer on the black. That is all okay. But we'll check in over at the stove once things are hot. All right, I'm definitely seeing like a deeper patch of pink in there. I think we've got some tonal variation, which is always exciting, yeah. Actually, ooh, great, and the water is clear. That is awesome. So I am going to gently remove some of this water. We're gonna set our pink yarn aside and we're gonna add our blue dye. I'm gonna go fill this with water just to rinse it out. Don't forget, we're gonna be at a one-to-one -one ratio of our pink to blue. As for our pink color, here we are. We have some very, very deep patches of pink and some lighter patches of pink. I'm gonna take, oh dear, very carefully the zip ties and I'm gonna rotate us, hopefully not sending us into the pan, uh, moving the zip ties down about a quarter approximately of the way down the skein, just so that way the first end that we're gonna put in now it's going to be slightly different and you might notice as we go in we're seeing blue but we're also seeing some various purple hues in here because of just the variation that we have of the amount of pink in various areas but overall this is feeling extremely blue to me right now I am trying to make sure we get some coverage all over. Of course, I realized I did not adjust the camera angle after I was showing what was on top of the pot. But anyway, um, I'm going to let this sit for around 30 minutes. Uh, so that way we can absorb not all the blue, but a lot of the blue. And I do remember that the one to one ratio gave us a blurple feeling colorway. But it is worth me pointing out one really important fact. The color mixing that I referenced at the beginning of the video was done on a superwash yarn that was 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And so any results that we get here today could have slightly different ways that the colors lean because the fiber content is so different. And so this is very important to remember. But we're also, the way we're layering colors, some areas have have significantly more pink than others. And so that means the others that have less pink, that's gonna skew more to the royal blue that we have at the bottom of that color mixing from the middle that is more blurply color. And that's all okay. But this is why if you wanted to get say a sweater's quantity of a color on this yarn and you had an idea of a recipe from the past, it's worth doing a test on a single skein to make sure you're getting the color that was in your head. So we may be ending up with more of a deep blue <laughs> once we add the black, and that's fine. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. The ties are warm, but we have, it looks like, not very much blue left. There's blue left. Oof. But look at that color already. Look at those differences, the pinks and the blues. Ooh, this is pretty. This is gonna be really, really pretty. All right, I'm gonna set the yarn aside and let's go move those zip ties. 
Right, we are steamy and there is sun. So the last time we moved it about a quarter of the way down, I'm now gonna move the zip ties about 180 degrees. So to the opposite end that went into the, the end that went into the blue first is now gonna be the end that goes into the black last. And the yarn is piping hot. It'll be piping hot when we add it into the black dye. But let's go back to the dye bath. This is ready to go. I'm gonna get my gloves on and we're gonna add the dye. And this is 150 milliliters of black, so we could be covering up our color quite a bit. Now, I haven't turned off the heat of our dye bath at all. It is going to be a little bit cooler because we just added that water, but we're going to be coming back right now with our very hot yarn and going straight in. And oh my goodness, this color already is so, so pretty. You know, in theory, we wouldn't need to leave this in to absorb all of the black. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so pretty right now. It's so pretty with just like the little bit. I'm like, oh, debating. Because we could remove the yarn now and then steam set it and then use a yarn mop to get a lot of the other black, but you know what? Nope, I'm gonna carry on and we're gonna have our beautiful, deep, uh, layered tonal here. Now, raising and lowering it and moving it around a bit does help distribute the color because what we don't want is to have a little bit of super bright blue left. We don't mind if the black is deeper in areas and less deep in others but we don't want there to be, it to look like there was a resist, is the goal. But now, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for 30 minutes. And I'm not anticipating that all of the color will absorb in those 30 minutes. I'm anticipating that we will still see some blue left. Uh, that is my hypothesis. And so, depending on what we have after 30 minutes, then we'll decide what we wanna do. Okay. Hey, it has been 30 minutes. I just turned the heat down and I'm anticipating that we might see a hint yeah, of some blues in here. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have a pan nearby to set the yarn, but I'm going to turn off the heat and remove the yarn from the dye bath. And this last little bit of blue we're gonna leave behind. There was, oh, that is so pretty. There was a time in the past where I would try to like help every last little bit of that blue absorb, but then sometimes we end up having bleeding when we're washing. So, tiny bit of blue, we're gonna leave that behind. And I'm gonna set aside our gorgeous yarn to cool. It's a little overexposed right now, but you can get a feel for some of that variation we have. We're gonna let the yarn cool and then we'll wash it. Our layered tonal is beautiful. Uh, we definitely have some like real standout pink notes because of, you know, I don't know if I didn't stir it very well after adding the pink, but there's some areas where the pink is super, super dark in a way that surprised me a little bit, but that doesn't entirely matter. The good news is that there maybe is a soft hint of some blue in the water, but it is just a soft hint. So I do wanna add just a little bit of some clear dish soap. Maybe that's a little more than I intended, but I'm gonna add it into the basin and then fill this back up. All right. Oh, I am so happy. <laughs> it's always great when you have something that is super saturated. And okay, we have a little bit of something coming out, but honestly, from the amount of color we have in this yarn, that is not bad, that is not bad. All right, I am gonna go ahead and rinse this a few times off camera, and then I'll come back in. But I would say that for having, uh, I guess, I mean, we have three grams of dye total, but two of those grams are very, very pigmented colors. Uh, our true black and our Caribbean blue. Deep Magenta is pigmented, but that one isn't a bleeder, I think, at least. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we will come back. 
And I have to remind myself this is non-super wash yet, so we don't want to felt anything, but I'm going to just try to be as gentle as I can as we go about rinsing the yarn. And actually, I mean, that is like whiter. There's definitely a cloudiness um, to whatever we're rinsing that can happen from some non-super wash yarns. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what that is that we're rinsing out, like dust or something. That makes the, the water look a little cloudy. But anyway, I'll be back after a couple of rinses. And here we are two rinses later. I'm not seeing any more bleeding. So I'm gonna go put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. When I started this video, I thought that I was gonna go for a really deep saturated purple. And there's elements of this that do feel purple, but mostly it is a deep, almost slate blue with some more purplish pink hints. And that's because of how unevenly our pink layer struck to the yarn. But honestly, I'm not that mad because this is gorgeous. This yarn is non-superwash, 50% merino wool, 25% alpaca, 25% nylon. It is soft, it has a little bit of a halo, I wouldn't call it like a smooth yarn, and I mean it's it's gorgeous. And I mean I suppose this color does feel like dreams almost, nighttime, and it feels fitting for a yarn line named Imagination. Cindy Fry, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you're gonna love this yarn, which it's very much my color. <laughs> I love these colors so much. Uh, and I'm so proud of how this turned out. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Cindy, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You can find links to this down in the video description. Cindy, thank you again. Sometimes when I'm approaching a yarn dyeing project, I have a specific destination in mind, a specific color, target that I want to hit, and then if I miss it a little bit, I can be disappointed. Today was more of a, I want to fly in this general direction, and I didn't know exactly where it would end up, and so therefore I am thrilled with the destination. It's always a little bit easier to be excited and satisfied when you don't know exactly where you're gonna end up. I find the times I end up being the most frustrated with a dyeing project are when I'm doing something very specific and then I kind of miss it. But here, twist it up. I mean, it's blue and purple, but I'm feeling the purple vibes a little bit more. If I wanted to feel more of the deep purple vibes, what I would do from here would be to increase the amount of pink or decrease the amount of blue. One or the other should help. In general, I think adding black also adds a lot of blue to the equation. Um, and so sometimes that can shift something that might be more blurple to start with to feeling more blue overall, uh, I think. <laughs> oh, but I have one other comment that is really, really important. All of the color mixing that I showed off towards the beginning of the video were done on a different type of yarn. Those were all done on 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And different fiber contents, which include alpaca, absorb color differently and present the final color differently. So it's possible that even if I had done this exact recipe on, say, stroll, then I went to here, or if I were to take this recipe I did today and go and do it on stroll, the final color might feel different. Maybe it would feel more purple, maybe it would feel even more blue, but it's because the way that different fibers, alpaca versus more superwash wool, might absorb the color and then present themselves. Uh, this isn't always an issue, but sometimes can be. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I love playing around with different yarn bases, and so please subscribe and turn on notifications, doing all those youtube -y things so that way you don't miss a new video. And the more you engage with these videos, the more likely YouTube is to actually recommend them to you. I have no control over the notifications that YouTube sends out. Uh, but the best thing you can do if you want to make sure you don't miss a video is ringing that bell uh, and turning it to notify you for all videos. But even then, sometimes it doesn't work, so watching, obviously, 
So watching, of course, but commenting and liking videos will help the algorithm continue to give them to you, and it'll help the videos get recommended to other people as well. Thank you so much for watching.